You're listening to Level Up Your Business, the podcast where we talk to hardworking business owners and leaders and help them solve real issues in real time. I'm your host, Sarah Frasca, restaurant owner, keynote speaker, and business coach. I've spent my career not only in corporate America, but also as an entrepreneur, carrying on my family's legacy through my restaurant. Now, a business coach and consultant, I'm helping other businesses to use creative problem solving and innovative thinking to drive lasting change. Stay tuned to hear some inspiring guidance that will help you to level up your business. It was actually yesterday. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, hi, Christy, and welcome to the Level Up Your Business podcast. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Thank you for being on with us. And, you know, it's um, really been fun to get to know you and to get to know your business. I think you are such a visionary and have used kind of technology and your creative problem solving to build a business. And we'll get into that in just a little bit. But um, it was really fun to be connected to you. So thanks again for sharing your passion, your energy. And uh, I'm excited for you to tell our listeners what the heck you do. Yeah, no, me too. I, I'm thrilled to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Yes. Great. Well, as we always do, we kind of start a little bit with what is your business? What did you build and how did you do it? So a little bit of a culmination of your past and um, tell us what your business is all about. And so that's just a small question, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> tell me everything in, in one exactly. question. Exactly. Um, yeah, but they could take the whole hour. So feel free. <laughs> you just tell well, us. Well, right. I, I will jump <laughs> to the short of it. Um, I am the CEO and founder of a company called Roadproof. Uh, what Roadproof does is that we have um, official relationships with the Department of Transportation and other camera providers, and we archive and um, index the traffic cameras across the United States. And we do that originally actually it started out, is that I also am the CEO and founder of an internet marketing agency, um, and I specialize in service businesses. And due to my background, I have mostly personal injury clients, so personal injury firms. And, um, you know, traffic camera video is notoriously hard to get a hold of. And having that kind of evidence can really make the difference uh, to clients, injured people. Uh, and so I found a hole in the market and my team was creative and hardworking and we filled that role. So um, that's basically the problem that we solved. And um, so a lot of our clients on Roadproof um, are personal injury firms, but we also work with rideshare and insurance companies and basically any uh, professional business. This is a B2B business platform that's looking sure. for video evidence of car accident cases. Mm -hmm. That's great. And how many of the 50 states are you in at this point? Um, 22. We have over 23,000 okay. cameras in on our platform. We have 16,000 virtual weather stations as well. So we're also bringing in weather. Um, it's, it's definitely growing from an idea to a reality. It has grown very rapidly. It's great. Yeah. yeah. And I, I mean, I think again, my, my comment of just how innovative you've been, you saw an issue yeah, and you built the solution to solve that problem. And I just, I commend you because I think it's, it's a big deal. Um, yeah. And I can say that, right. When you look back on it, you're like, wow, big issue, big solution. But with anybody who's kind of got that entrepreneur mindset, you see an, you see a problem with one client or one business. And you think, is this common with more of my clients? And you think, yeah, this mm -hmm. is. And so you, you create the solution uh, very small and then scale out. So, um, it's just that you look at the big picture, you think, how does somebody ever create such a big thing? And it's just really just solving one small problem. So, but it yes. was, I was really surprised when we got into this, that there wasn't a solution already in place. Um, but the more, you know, research and experience and, just really digging into the industry, I've realized a lot of the answers of why there was um, a solution to that problem yet. I mean, we've got an overtaxed infrastructure. It takes a lot of commitment. There's, it's just really an interesting 
issue. So I was kind of surprised when I went hunting and couldn't find an answer. You know, it's, it's again, it's one of those topics that it seems overwhelming. Like how on earth would you go out and canvas the country and get access to the camera that's on the, you know, highway or the intersection. Um, So will you talk a little bit about just kind of the process of working with the governmental agencies? And I mean, was it, I can imagine it being kind of difficult and. Yeah. You know, I mean, (laughs) when it comes to getting footage, um, the traditional way is you make a FOIA request, which is a Freedom of Information Act, and you go and you submit that to your government agency, the DOT, whoever's in charge of those cameras. And um, most of the time what law firms were quickly finding out is that um, they weren't having very much success. So this whole process of doing a FOIA request and then you wait and you wait, you don't know if you actually have footage or if there was even a camera there or anything else. Hmm. And the reason why um, that is, is because the departments of transportation are very taxed, like I said, and most of them don't even record the video um, for a lot of reasons, one of which is expense, the infrastructure it would take, the manpower it would take and things like that. The Mm -hmm. states that do record don't keep that recording for long. Some of them are a week, some of them for a couple of weeks. Um, And so that's a really short window to try to to try to grab that. Um, Mm -hmm. and the reason again is, is time and money. It's, we're talking about petabytes of data. So massive amounts of, of servers and storage space and like I said, infrastructure. So, um, it, it made a lot of sense of why there wasn't a solution in place. Um, and again, when you asked about why or how it is working with departments of transportation and different, uh, entities that are camera providers, it's how you would think it would be. It's a, it's a lot of overworked people just working as hard as they can, doing the best they can, um, very um, cooperative. So we definitely had a lot of, so they were filling a need that they also knew was in place. Sure. Um, and so that really made a big difference. Um, we've also mm-hmm. been able to work with um, uh, police departments. Um, we're opening up our mm-hmm. platform to um, like the homicide, automobile homicide department. So we're giving, we're a resource to um, those those entities that they need without asking for additional budget, without asking for, um, you know, more manpower in, in right. their building. So it's been That's really, great. really rewarding in a surprising way. Mm. Can you give me kind of like what what is the most typical request? Like what is the like kind of usage of your um, technology materials? Piece? Yeah. So regardless yeah. if it's a personal injury, if it's an entity, it's an insurance company, it doesn't matter. They say, okay, I have an accident. Do you have video? And what we need to do to look for that is we need the time of the accident, the date of the look of the accident and the location of the accident. That's it. So we're not asking for Mm -hmm. any personal identifying information. Most of these cameras, I would say, actually, let me restate that all of the cameras um, that are on the roads these days uh, that have video available, none of them have a resolution that's good enough to capture faces or license plates or anything that's Mm -hmm. personal identifying information. You can make out uh, make and models of vehicles, things like that, but not anything else. So um, in order for our clients or the people who are using our system, the businesses that are using our system, we just need to know time, date, and location of the accident. Um, and then we can query our system and find video evidence either of the actual incident itself or aftermath footage. Um, because these cameras are actually on a 360 degree rotation and they can zoom in um, and so if they don't catch the crash itself or the the incident on the highway itself, mm-hmm. they'll mm-hmm. turn and look at the incident. And so then you get like the layout of the aftermath, where the vehicles are sitting and things like that. And anybody who's in personal injury or in any of that kind of side of, of um, the industry over there knows how much money and time and energy they spend trying to figure out what happened. Um, because even people who the accident happened to, it happened to them. So they are just witnesses and really unreliable because they don't actually know what happened. They either it happened like they didn't get a good view. Witnesses can be unreliable. Um, so I spend a lot of time and money on um, accident scene reconstruction um, and investigators to try to figure out 
what happened, who's at fault, and in a lot of cases, how can we make sure this doesn't happen again? And so um, having that aftermath footage, you know, have, or the video of itself, you just know what happened. It's right there in front mm-hmm. of you. So, right. so, so typical people are just businesses looking to figure out what happened in a car accident. Okay. And is it only highways that the cameras are located? Um, mostly, uh, it is interstates and highways, um, as okay. we've been working with the larger, uh, DOTs and, and, and getting this big entities, uh, those camera coverage, we are breaking down into the smaller areas, more intersections and things like that. Um, it's just a massive undertaking. And so, um, we kind of went with the, the big systems first, but there's a lot mm-hmm. more, Makes um, sense systems out there. And a lot of our clients too, our personal injury clients will say, Hey, I'm in this area. Um, and I know exactly where these cameras, who manages them and what entity, who you can speak to there. And so they, they are advocates for us a lot of times, or they're working within the government agencies themselves. And they're saying, Hey, let's, let's get our cameras onto this platform so that we can leverage, uh, the system as well. So it's, it's been a very, Hmm. um, interesting approach because our clients are very proactive because they want this too. So how do they leverage it? Is it like a monthly retainer and they have access to as many as they want? Or is it like each file, each video is a certain price? How have you priced it? Um, Well, it kind of depends on the usage. So enterprise level versus like a small, um, you know, boutique law firm, they'll have, we have different, um, you know, ways that you can approach the system, get on the system. Um, You can either submit your case in in a, uh, do a search query, which um, we just have a one-time fee for a law firm. It costs $47. Um, You put in this, like the details I told you about the time, the date, the location, um, you can submit the police report if you want to, um, but just give us some details. There's an interactive map when you put in the location, so you can make sure your pin's in the right spot. And that interactive map also shows what cameras are close by. So you can you don't have to blindly submit that search. You could say, you know what, this is close to a camera. I want to I want to do that. And then our team of experts um, scours our system, finds all the videos, aftermath, all of that. We bundle it all up and then we push it back to the law firm. Um, and typically when we do that, we charge $297 for a video package. So it's it's very, very affordable. I mean, we just wanted to make it available to as many law firms as we could. Um, and then we also have the ability, depending on your usage, to get into the system and search yourself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So there's two different ways of doing it. Um, so it's it really just depends on how how people want to use it. Yeah, and it's great. I mean, I, I think it's again, just a really brilliant um, way for people to gain access to something mm-hmm. that, again, seems unwieldy or just, you know, overwhelmingly complicated. Um, Tell me a little bit about your business. So you built the team with a group, if I remember correctly, from the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about the evolution of your, of your team. Well, that's, yeah, that's kind of interesting. Um, So I started out, I've been actually doing internet marketing. I started as a research analyst like 20 years ago. I say that it used to feel like I don't like that number keeps creeping up, but uh, 20 years ago, so as a research analyst in internet marketing and studying um, search engine algorithms, right? And so I was very much on the cutting edge, watching everything that everyone did, Google, all that stuff. And my job was to interpret what happened and then um, explain how businesses could make money with these changes on the internet. Um, And so, of course, being on the kind of the cutting edge of that, who were some of my favorite uh, listeners, readers, personal injury associate, you know, marketing associations. So that's how I uh, got connected to the personal injury. Um, And I also was had the uh, privilege to work with some really talented people in um, online, really talented developers, really talented um, teams, things like that, because I was always looking for the best to interview to say, okay, look what you're doing. You're better than everyone else. Tell me how you're making money. Tell me how you're doing that. And so I had this really great um, network of people who were the best and then we worked together on stuff. Well, I launched my marketing agency about four years ago. um, And I kind of said, hey, does anybody want to do this with me? 
And I was very humbled by the quality of the people who were like, yeah, I do, I do. Um, And so we launched my marketing agency and we were just loving life and doing our thing. Um, But we wanted to build something, not just the marketing agency that, you know, has my name on it. It's Christy Jane. Um, But we wanted to do something, you know, it's kind of like three, my two core uh, team members, partners, you know, they were like, like, let's do something. Let's build something together. Um, It's like, okay, so we, you know, all dreamy eyed and everything. Sure, let's just make a business, you know. Um, And so we started a a company called KMW Labs. So and my two partners are Matt and Wes and I'm Christy. So very creative, right? (laughs) Right off the bat, we were just like we but we didn't know what we wanted to do. We just knew we wanted to work together and work together on something that we owned and that we could just kind of make it like a side gig and something that, you know, because we're very creative talented people. We can do this. My team's a brilliant. So I'm like, okay, mm. high five. Um, three weeks later, this opportunity landed on my desk or this idea. And I was like, oh, my God. hey, you guys, do you want to build this? And, you know, Matt is our wizard developer. And he's like, I could build this. And, you know, Wes does branding and graphics and all of that stuff. Um, and he's like, I can design it and brand it. And I was like, well, I can sell it. And so we started down this path, but we had no mm. idea that this little funny side business would take, would turn into what it turned into because we were just like, well, sure, let's see if we can build this thing. And then a couple, now we're two years in and it's definitely surpassing the marketing agency as far as becoming a life of its own. So much so that um, Matt and Wes have had to step into uh, Roadproof, which is owned by KMW Labs full time. Um, And so, and out of the marketing Wow. So it's been a really big growth moment, but it really started out with just people who love working together, building and growing, and then having an idea. And I think that really is a is important if you're going to create something is that it's the, who you're creating it with is almost more important than what you're creating, because you could have the best idea in the world. But if you don't have the right team, you know, all passionately pushing forward, you're in an uphill battle. It's going to cost you way more time and money than if you really get your team together um, and then decide, OK, look, we're going to do this. So I was really, that's, really blessed. That's great. I mean, I think um how many people do you have now that are a part of Rope Proof? I'm just curious. About a dozen, about a dozen. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. We've kept wow. it really small, but that's the thing about the system is that um, it's really user driven. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, we have the experts who do the searches, the search assists to go out and you know scour our platform for things like that. And so there is a human element. Uh, we are working with other ways to automate, but the funny thing is, um, is as great as AI is um, to identify lots of stuff, like we're developing an AI to help um, see during an incident how fast vehicles were going and things like that. But um, wow. when it comes to actually finding videos um, for these incidences, we're realizing very quickly that humans are absolutely necessary because human behavior is so unpredictable that it truly takes a human to find find hmm. these these incidences as far as like the really high accuracy of it. Yeah. So there's definitely a big human element behind road proof, but we're all USA, us based. And um, yeah, it's been a really great adventure so far. That's great. So what's next for road proof? (laughs) Um, You know, I think that's a hard question to answer because there's a lot of opportunity. Um, really what we're focused on now is um, getting more cameras into our system, getting more users onto our system and things like that. But we are also, when I was tapping into like the AI side of it, there's a lot of important data. So when I, when I said before, right, it's hard to get this video where the truth is, most of this video and this information is not being captured at all before we came in. So this isn't the only place that you can get this video and this, this information um, in most cases. So I'm saying 80% of the time you can only get this video from our platform. And what we found out besides the fact of videos for evidence for car accidents and different incidences, a lot of this um, in some of our roadways are notoriously unsafe. But we can't Mm -hmm. learn and improve our roadways unless we're capturing the data to truly analyze it and make better decisions going forward. And that's one of the things that we're really seeing with the 
um, DOTs and things is that they're also eager to make roadways safer. They're eager to um, make dry, you know, things less congested, just less problems on the roadway. Um, and so mm. being able to capture this data and put it into this big data lake is kind of is what we call it. And being able to analyze it for improvements in the future, I think is really where the future of of our data will go. Because um, in order to train true, good um, AIs and machine learning and things like that, you need a lot of data. And so we're capturing that data and it's really, um, you know, the, and it's capturing the interest of colleges and things like that because they want to train and, and tap into this data for, for more solutions for safer highways in the future. That's great. I mean, I'm thinking of, and I was traveling this week, so I was, you know, headed to the airport and they're doing construction. And yes. so nothing is marked any longer. Um, and I was, I turned off on the wrong road and then I had to turn around and I was thinking, I can't be the only one that's doing this. Right. Like, this is crazy. And the, you know, ability to kind of monitor that at a, at a macro level and see the patterns, I can see that being very effective so that signage is improved or yeah. they can see which intersections are causing the most incidents or. Um, so, I mean, I think it's fantastic. It seems to me like it's another great use of big data. Yes. But it's, it's video, you know, or pictures or, um, and so it just, again, it seems so unwieldy to me, but I'm it grateful is. that you've built this system that can start to track it and understand it. And yeah. So, I mean, you got like, um, emergency response times, the processes, there's a lot of processes and things in place that have, that are very good, that have been improving uh, year over year um, with all the different um, city levels, municipalities, things like that. But um, there's always room for more improvement. So that kind of stuff, marking construction zones, things like that. So if we can really use this large data and analyze it to make better processes on a national level, then there could be a lot more people who, you know, avoid not only being weirdly routed to a place that they shouldn't be and causing congestion, stuff like that, but it can, it can save a lot of uh, fatal incidences mm. on our highway, which is, you know, yes. long-term, that's really the goal for everyone. Um, you know, it's uh, understanding what happened, why it happened and how to prevent it in the future. So, yeah, it's been, mm -hmm. it's been a very interesting, rewarding thing to get, to get into at first you think, Oh yeah. You know, these departments, of transportation, these uh, entities, the, the police department, they're not going to like this, but that is the exact opposite of what we found. It has been very much like, thank you so much for doing this. Um, oh. Thank you for letting us have access to this because we open it to, I mean, any police department, anybody wants that we open it up to them and just say, you know, here you go, do your jobs. Um, and so it's just allowing hmm. the, all of those entities to have more resources available to them. So it, we were very um, happy and surprised by not only the lack of resistance, but really um, the collaboration. So that's been really, really great. Well, it ends up as a win-win. And again, I think everybody having the same goal of how do we make this safer? Um, yeah. How do we fix things? And and I love the fact that that's, you know, again, a kind of a common goal. Um, okay. So let me just kind of mention, um, you know, I, I think your role as sales leader and bringing new folks on, I want to yeah. talk a little bit about how people can get a hold of you because I think the, the, um, I happened upon your business. I, I was told by someone. And so That's my curiosity of like, what the heck are you doing to build this? But first tell people how they can find you. Well, uh, our company is called road proof road and then P R O O F road proof. Yes. I'm Christy. So Christy at roadproof.com. You can feel free to uh, email me. That's my cell number. It's always on like every good business owner. Um, but if you want to see the system, if you want to see how it works, just go to Roadproof and book a demo and mm -hmm. um, my team will walk you through it and make it very easy, personalize it to your needs. There's no hidden 
fees. It's such an easy system to use. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so that's how you get a hold of us. Um, we, like I said, Perfect. cater to uh, personal injury firms, insurance companies, rideshare, those kind of things. Anybody who's dealing with incidences on the roadways. That's great. That's perfect. And we'll leave that up for a minute and also put it in our show notes. Um, okay. This one is a little bit of a bigger question and you may need a minute to think about it, but what's keeping you up at night as you think about your business and your future and kind of where you want to go? What's keeping you up at night? Um, well, I mean, the entire business model is pretty lofty. Um, so it started out with one state, one issue, one thing. Um, but when you're trying to scale across the entire nation, um, and you're just running, you're having to contact and, and deal with all of these different camera providers, which are really, um, as segmented as every state. I mean, some states have six departments of transportation. Um, and mm -hmm. so that's why this is never happened. No one's had a national level database of traffic camera um, footage ever. And you think, well, why not? Well, I'll tell you why. Because <laughs> we're thinking, this is ridiculous. You know what I mean? So everyone's great and everyone wants to do it, but then it's the logistics of actually getting it done right. um, and all of, the, all of that stuff. So just the scalability of it um, is, is a lot. Um, mm -hmm definitely a lot. So, but in, because this hasn't happened yet. So I, I thought, what is, what, come on. Um, but I, I think I mentioned this to you and we talked before, but you know, our, um, like police and all of that databases for law enforcement was not nationalized until nine 11. Mm -hmm. That's when they nationalized the everything. And you thought, what, how is that possible? So it's mm -hmm. like, it takes, um, you know, a social moment to make those kind of big changes, right? You've got Amber Alert system because of that tragedy, um, things like that. And so what's the problem with Roadproof is that we are ahead of our time, which is never in the best place to be. You don't want to be the first one, you know, uh, making this road because, um, there's a lot of mistakes to be happen. It's better to be the second or third one, as you know, with the <laughs> business, right? Use the first one's the hard one. Um, and so we're ahead of our time because there isn't a social tragedy or anything like that. That's really pushed the attention to this need. Um, and so that's the good thing, but mm -hmm. the because we don't have this huge tragedy that's causing that instead we're here, we're pushing forward before to make things safer. Um, and so, but the scalability and, and just, this is a hard, this is a big mountain to climb. Um, and so that's, that's been the biggest challenge, but like I said, it's, we've been making huge headways and so mm -hmm. it's just got to keep on pushing forward. Yeah. It's an interesting, um, I mean, first of all, it sounds like herding cats. And so <laughs> it's like kudos to you and your team for having, um, the, tenacity to you know go and talk to all these people and i'm sure it's there's a lot of follow-up calls and there's a lot of coordination and those sorts of things i can only imagine um and but i was thinking through just now like you know the infrastructure of our country with yeah. the bridges and the roads and the mm -hmm. signs and all of those things i mean really the data and the video becomes another element of that it's like another it's another um, layer. And so I, I really think, you know, again, you identified this, this path. I think, you know, obviously, I, I'm, I'm a little bit projecting or having empathy for, for you. And if I was in your position, it's almost like the immense opportunity is overwhelming because there's so many paths you could take. I mean, you could yes. go to small roads and intersections and you could, you know, go to a place where maybe you're buying cameras or installing cameras or, you know, you know that there's a gap somewhere now. And so you can, you know, own, maintain um, the cameras itself. Then I was thinking, you know, gosh, we've got bridges. I mean, bridges that, you know, and you, you talked a little bit about a social incident. I'm from the Twin Cities area and there was a major Minneapolis bridge collapse. And it's, yeah. You know, I was just thinking like, gosh, if there was a camera that was monitoring like 
is a structure still stable? And do you know the moment where it tips to that, like, ah, time out, it's no longer stable. And so I would be on this, if I was in your shoes, like on this, you know, like, where do we go from here? There's so much opportunity. Yeah. And that is a big, that's a big thing. When you have something that it becomes bigger than bigger than yourself, bigger than your team. Um, which direction do you go? So many opportunities. Right. And I mean, just for, and I've been an entrepreneur my whole life. And so I think what you have to do is, you know, keep your eye on the long goals and then just take the opportunities and take it day by day um, and just say yes to as much as you can and not force anything. Right. So that's, I truly believe that, um, you know, there's things that are meant for people, you know, that, that you, the universe, you know, like if you're pushing in the right direction and doing the right stuff, then you will find your path, even if it is a little bit hard. So I'm mm-hmm. um, just following that kind of mindset of follow up on the opportunities. Don't force anything, um, but be persistent, right? Like every good entrepreneur be persistent. Um, and we've been really kind of finding our path, but there's so many branches. It's, it's been really incredible. Um, but I think that as these opportunities are growing, then more people are interested in joining us and then we can have, you know, more focuses in other places. And so that's mm-hmm. been, been really good. It's just the relationships, but we are definitely looking for more relationships, more people to support um, the big picture with us and mm-hmm. partners and things like that. So. That's, that's really great. I mean, I, you know, I think, again, as I think of your business, I mean, you've got, you know, your original founders, and then you've probably built out um, the team in a way that I guess my recommendation would be to make sure you've got all the functional areas met. So you've got the marketing and the intake, and then you've got the operations and the HR and the finance and the admin Mm -hmm. and the IT and the technology and those sorts of things. And so you know, that helps to build Mm -hmm. the, the leadership. And then the scalability is a little bit easier because there's always, you know, you're just kind of adding in more layers. Um, so yeah, because again, I would, I was thinking through like, even in your operations, you almost have like verticals, you know, it's like, yeah, we've got the team that supports the personal injury and we've got the team that supports the, the, um, investigators for the insurance companies and we've got the you know yep. the maybe it's the public services with fire and rescue and uh police and things like that um well that's really great i mean i think you know again it's that's kind of our job and and why our book is called up and to the right it's like how can we help a business to mm-hmm. reach their summit if you think about a graph, it's like, you know, kind of going up into the right, more revenue, more productivity, more profitability, more retention. Um, and so, again, I think you've got the tiger by the tail. It's how can you really build that foundation that allows you to not go crazy right. with the amount of opportunity, but to prioritize and methodically move towards that ultimate vision. So it's really yeah. great. And I think from my experience is really just making sure you have the right people in the right seats. And so that's been a really big focus for this year is really making sure that we have these, um, you know, the right operations, the right, you know, and all of these, these pieces that you're identifying. Absolutely. Because um, the more infrastructure, the more, you know, humanity you add, the, the, if you, that's where the variables start to really uh, shift and change. Because like I said, I've been very lucky, blessed to have the team that I've had that we've just been working so cohesively for so long Mm -hmm. that adding in new, uh, team members to, you know, fit with our culture, to fit with our, our goals, um, you know, our, everything that has to do with the business has, is what our focus has been in 2024. So, um, great. The slow path is what we've decided, not the, the big path, but, um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's interesting. It's it definitely got bigger than we thought it would. Uh, but 
it's so far we're still having a good time. And that's really what it's been all about for us is a passion, something that we truly believe in. Um, that we want to come and go to, you know, it doesn't feel like work. We, what are we going to do today? That kind of stuff. Although it is a little bit like hurting cats at times. And so work <laughs> is never always joyous, but, um, you know, as far as the core team goes, it's, we're still really loving what we do. So I, That's I hope great. that remains the same long enough for us to pass it on. If that is what happens, like I said, it is going to become bigger than we are. So. Yeah. Tell me, um, and maybe this is one of my last questions for you, but we'll see. Um, How much are you working on the business versus in the business as the founder and CEO? So for example, you know, really thinking through the strategy and building the team and developing and mentoring and versus doing the actual calls and hiring and training. And so again, I'll say like working on the business versus working in the business. Well, I would say I am the queen of delegation. So otherwise I wouldn't be able to be running two businesses successfully. Um, Well, And then I also do investment properties and other stuff. So I, I, so I'm really good at the, at the delegation, something I learned from a mentor of mine blessed so a while, long time ago. Um, But so for Roadproof, I would say at this point, about 50, 50. Mm -hmm. Um, Cool. With, yeah. And so yeah. more than I was, I really started to nail down and get into the business as far as like the right people in the right seats um, this year. Um, mm-hmm. So in the bef- last year, I was definitely working on it, not in it. But sometimes, you know, I have to really get in there and get into the operations of things mm-hmm. and figure out, make sure everyone is is on the same page and our culture and everything like that. I was kind of taking that part for, for granted. So definitely 50, 50 now. So that's good. That's great. I mean, it's, it's different per organization and per leader in oh, my yes. finding, but <laughs> I work with I like the injury fact. firms. And so, yes. yes, they're like, I need to do marketing, but I'm an attorney. <laughs> I need to do this, but I'm at core and court. And you're like, I understand you. And so then I'm also have the privilege to working with uh, business owners who are stepping away from that and they actually get to work, you know, on instead of in. So yes, you're definitely speaking my language. Yeah, it's difficult. And again, it's an evolution. I, I oh, like how you kind of talked about, you know, I was on, now I'm 50-50 and there might be a time where I'm doing something different, but that makeup evolves over time as the team changes and the business scales. So your flexibility and nimbleness there is, is like, I, I would say spot on so that you can support the business and grow it. Yeah. Um, you got to have that kind of you got to let go of what you think you, sh- you know, like you think, oh, this is what success is. Um, or this is what I should be doing. You know what I mean? So I think that that ability to be agile is really important if you're going to take a, a business from, you know, a startup to actually surviving. Mm-hmm. In my experience, great. Because great. you just want to go with it. You know, sometimes you just need to be go able with the to flow. clean the toilets or, you know, be the CEO. <laughs> Yep. So, but lately it's That's been exactly right. Yeah. So, you know, okay. and I also enjoy, I don't want to be one of those people who's, who's doing big vision I, things for the company, but also not talking to the customers, talking with what people need, you know, taking on those roles where I'm interactive, actively actually doing demos, um, demonstrating our software makes, because you don't want to be those people like, oh yeah, you know, I, I'm a founder CEO, but I don't really know how this software works anymore. It's been updated so many times. So that's mm-hmm. what I would like to always avoid is to have some familiarity to be able to really work with my team from a place of knowledge and not just a place of, well, this is, I hear what you're saying, but it's not important. You know what I mean? It's really great. I mean, I think can it, continuing to have that connection with ultimately, um, your service, your yeah. product and the users, I mean, that will help you to evolve and be nimble because then you actually know firsthand what is needed. Yes. So yeah. Yeah. That's, that's great. great. Yeah. That's great. Well, any other things that you want to brainstorm in the moment you need help on, you're keeping you up at night, anything there? Uh, no, not really. I mean, you okay. pretty much just nailed it on the head with what opportunity <laughs> are you going to take advantage of? And yeah. Uh, you know, that kind of stuff. And I just think we're just doing the best that we can. I, you know, it's, 
it's also, you know, there is one small thing that I'll touch on because it seems like sure. I've done, so I've seen some of your uh, podcasts and things like that, that um, in a, it's as a female entrepreneur, um, it's really much, a lot of times feels like a boys club. And so there's not that many female entrepreneurs out there. Uh, there are more and more every day, mm-hmm. but I think that our, um, examples and the mentors and the things we have less to choose from. And a lot of the ideas of what success is, has been defined by men. And Mm -hmm. so it's like, what is success? And as more and more women become successful entrepreneurs, I think that it's going to be really fun to see how we change the definition of success as far as like, we don't need the fancy cars necessarily. We don't need the big houses. Maybe it's more of a work-life balance. You know, it's other things that Mm -hmm. we're not killing ourselves and dying at our desk. Instead, it's, you know, other things. So um, yeah, that has been a kind of a unique challenge in a lot of ways, because most of the time when I'm speaking in a room um, and I'm talking to enterprise level clients, I'm doing things that it's all men. So yeah, That's- it's it's funny you say that. I, I I feel the same and I feel like you have done such a beautiful job of being a woman that is willing to empower other women. And, um, you know, we're, you and I, at least from what I know of you, strong enough to stand in a room full of men, but yeah. so happy to help other women get in the room. And Anytime so- I can, absolutely. Yeah, Lift while you yeah. climb has always been my motto from the beginning. Um, and it's it's really, right. And so when I've, like I said, 20 years in internet marketing, definitely started out as a boys club, SEO, search engine optimization, um, that kind of stuff, same thing. Um, but, you know, we've, as women, like I said, we're definitely branching out, becoming more. And it, there is- they they speak about this ruthlessness about, amongst women. And I don't think that that's necessarily true when it comes to successful women. It seems like in most cases, I have been, you know, mentored, supported, the door opened for me um, by other women. It's always like, oh, come here, you know, let me, let me introduce you <laughs> to these people. Like, so um, it is very... It's great. And and so it's not like a war between men and women. Um, It's just as there's more successful female entrepreneurs, I'm noticing that most of the ones or all the ones that I've met are very inclusive, very supportive of other women. Um, And so it's not this ruthless place that people think it is really. Mm -hmm. It's like, come on in. Let me let me give you a leg up that I didn't get or that I did get. Um, And so it's it's great. I can't wait to see it for my daughters. and and things like that. Right. It's funny. Um, you, you know, I think as a, as I age too, there's some wisdom that comes with that, of course, and just this understanding of how, when you lean into who you are at your most kind of pure core, yeah. I think there's a lot of power to that. And so, yes. um, you know, even, even the other women that I've met, it's like the, the vulnerability, the transparency, the openness, the um, the realness has been something that, you know, I think, I think I'm better able to help other people when I'm as real as I possibly can be. And it's not always perfect. And, you know, right. but yeah, but I, I really, I think there's a, there's a new way for women. Like we can be open and honest. It's not how it was when I first started my career, where we almost had to pretend that we were super tough and like, you know, I'm working five yeah. to you know, 5am to 7pm to like, keep up with all the guys. And, you know, I think there's a there's a new way. So anyway, and it's because of leaders like yourself. Yeah, that are saying it like it is. Yeah, you, you are so comfortable with that. And so open. And it's, it's refreshing. You do it in a way that is um, supportive and compassionate. But it's also like, Oh, wow, like, that's the truth. And it's so refreshing to hear the truth. It's too kind, but you did. Yeah. Uh, you said something that I absolutely agree with is that, you know, as we become more authentically ourselves, then, you know, we can support the people. I think that with age, right. You get more comfortable in your own skin. And once you really, like you said, lean into who you are, you realize that all the things that you worried about 
weren't important and you become more successful, you make better choices, all of that stuff. And I wish that we can just give that same confidence to ourselves in our 20s and, you know, that whole like lean into it. But it is changing. And Mm -hmm. I think that we're able to make it as examples. We don't have to be that tough, uh, you know, totally work, no personal life, no family. Um, I'm a mom. I have four kids. And you tell you what, no one in my industry had any idea I had children at all. I never, I kept that completely separate because not only were they judging me by my looks and my age in my twenties, but if they also knew that I was a mother, that would have been like a career suicide, you know? So it would totally. And everyone's like, Oh, that's not true. Oh yes. Yes, it is true. Um, And so Mm -hmm. to have to kind of really compartmentalize my life, um, for so long, then you're just, you just sort of get over it, but you have some more clout. You've got a reputation, some experience and confidence Mm -hmm. that, you know what, I can, I can do this with also without, you know, not Mm -hmm. making excuses and, and other things. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a really interesting business dynamic that is changing. And like I said, for, for, um, I want to see my daughter, you know, it's like, it's changing from the generation before us to our generation to the next generation. Um, But yeah, it is a a lot to do with women that are in these positions of power who can mentor and support. And if anybody is in that position that can do that for the next generation, I know that my life has been completely changed by women because of that. So definitely too, because it makes a big difference. Yeah. Yes, me too. Well, I mean, thank you for sharing your journey and, um, Gosh, and and I'm I'm actually like secretly hoping that like clients, I told you I would introduce you to Rogue Proof. You're hopefully listening um, because you built such an amazing tool that yes. can help so many people. And so, um, thank you, thank you yeah. for doing it, and thank you for being willing to chat with me about it. I know that I'm going to keep sending people your way because they need you. They it's need your affordable tool. and it's easy to use. <laughs> you make it super simple. You just jump over yeah. here. Um, and when people are on it, they don't go, they find value. We just made it really, really easy. It's so really it, great. It saves on the customer service. I'll tell you. Well, yeah, gosh. I mean, you've, you've really built an amazing model. So thank you. yeah, good I'm job. Good, team. good, good team. job. Yeah. Well, thank you again for being a part of our show. And um, as you level up your business, I mean, if you need anything, I'm here, we're here. So keep doing what you're doing. Um, But if we can be of help, let me know. And otherwise, we'll just stay in touch. And I'm going to follow along on your journey and just be cheering for you from afar. I think I need all the help I can get. So I definitely I'll be in touch. (laughs) (laughs) Good, good. Well, thank you again, Christy. It's really great to see you again. And Congrats. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Sarah. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. All right. Have a good day, everybody. Thanks for listening. And if you're out there and you need help, my comment is always, you're not alone. So call, get some help, call us. Um, But you can do it as an entrepreneur or as a business leader. And uh, if you need Point Northeast help up and to the right, we're happy to help. So thank you. Have a great day, everybody. See you soon. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode of Level Up Your Business with me, Sarah Frasca. If you have a problem in your business that's keeping you up at night, please join us in a future episode so we can help get you unstuck. Just click in the link in the show notes and send us a message. Please remember, stay innovative, friends.